All right, so we're back to testing the amplifier here. I've got my power supply on. It seems to be working. We're drawing about uh, uh, five amps, something like that. And so before we did this, we could trace the signal down to here, but this wasn't on yet. So now this section is on and uh, we can try to get everything on camera here. Okay, you can see here. So we're at zero span at a one gigahertz and we can use a sniffer and uh, we can come here and we're uh, starting out uh, starting out very low minus 50 here minus 35 here and then we go into this section at the end of this section then we are up here at minus 22 so yeah, so that's through these two transistors and this and this uh, power splitter puts them back together, and yeah, we're at uh, we're at minus 22 dBm here. So we're getting good amplification all the way through here, and those two transistors there. Let me give you a better picture here. And these two transistors here are only getting up to about 30 C, but they still don't have little screws to hold them down. I need to figure that out. So anyway, we have a working amplifier all the way to here. And now we need to figure out uh, what's wrong over here. We already know that we have one bad um, power uh, uh, DC to DC converter. And that might be all there needs to be for that. Um, let's see, that is, oh, I see. So this DC to DC amplifier powers up this pair and this DC to DC uh, uh, generator uh, powers up this pair. So right now we would have, if I just hooked it up, this power wouldn't work and this pair would work, um, which might be interesting to test anyway to see if we can get power all the way to the output but we do need to figure out what we want to do with that or if anything uh, I happen to have a whole bunch of little uh, uh, 264 thread uh, screws and they're about twice as long as I need so uh, I use my cool snipping tool I really like this thing it's a really old stare at number 235 seven inch uh, for for snipping with a huge huge mechanical advantage so yeah I like that thing anyway uh, I did find the right size screws so now all of the uh, all the transistors have screws on them which it, they should have had originally and it looks like the top was threaded the same I didn't check that out uh, yeah, whatever top there was on here was also two, 264. Um, so there obviously was a top and there's a couple extra screws here. So I think there was actually some baffling in here as well to keep things from talking to one another. Uh, it is really, really interesting. Um, I'm not sure what to do about it. Um, some people are going to say make it go, but I don't really have use for a 30 watt, one gigahertz amplifier. Um, maybe I could, let's see, let me look, let me look. I haven't really looked up there. So here's, uh, here's my cheat sheet for ham radio frequency. So yeah, so the ham radio, there's a ham radio band that goes between 1.24 and 1.3 gigahertz so I could I could maybe try to go there I'd need a receiver and I need some other things but I'd have a 31 amplifier that'd be pretty cool but there's probably much easier ways to do that now I do you know, I I don't know maybe this is like real state of the art I doubt it I doubt it there must be better there must be better ones these days these are pretty cool transistors though so the other thought that I had was to build up a little amplifier board, design my own little amplifier board that uses these chips and um, just for fun, um, maybe a two stage, maybe one, 
mimic and then one fet like this. Um, that might be a fun project to do. Um, I did spend some time and got rid of all of that extra heat sink stuff that was everywhere. I don't know what the guy had in mind. He just gooped it in here, which is just ridiculous. So uh, I cleaned it off all on the boards. And you can see this is, the, whoever designed this board, I mean, this is fancy stuff. The, even, the, even the power input, uh, let me get something to point with here. Um, I think you can see this on camera. See the, the power, comes like this, this is a minus five volt, minus five comes, comes into here. And there's uh, a jumper here, so it's between the two, two transistors. And then there's, there's resistors here. And then that goes into two, that splits again. And uh, there's all kinds of chip capacitors in here to buffer things out. Little chip capacitor here, chip capacitor there, chip capacitor there. So there's like all kinds of stuff going on here. Over here where the where the 10 volt comes in, you can see there's two two size capacitors for for letting it through, a big one and a little one. So high capacitance, little capacitance. That comes in this away. Um, and then that goes out to uh, the uh, source of each each FET. Uh, there's a inductor feeding the DC in. Um, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff here that's just very, very fascinating for me. I mean, these boards are really, really thin. These these uh, Teflon boards are very, very thin. Um, like a, like a millimeter, you know, they're real they're real thin. So they're they're sandwiched down onto this metal plate inside this whole thing too. So. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Maybe we should get this thing under the microscope and give you a good tour all the way around. I think that's probably a good idea. All right, I took some close photographs here. Uh, we'll take a look at those. So we'll look at the first section here. Um, the input is on the right and it's gonna flow to the left. So at the input section here is a, a thermal switch to cut off the power if it gets too hot. There's a protection diode in case you put the voltage in backwards. That's that uh, TO220 part. Uh, on the input, there's a little um, resistor uh, to the transmission line. I assume that's there to make sure that if you don't have any input, uh, the, ground, the uh, input is grounded so it doesn't uh, go crazy. And then um, it goes into the first amplifier, which is teeny tiny, little gold thing there. Then we'll move into the next um, device, which is a little bit bigger. And then off to the first big device, which is the uh, FFL55. And uh, yeah, so we're done with the first section here and we'll go to the next. Uh, the next section has the um, and DC to DC converter, and uh, we're going to split the signal up into two paths. Um, we're going to then send that through two different amplifiers and then combine them again. And then it comes to the last section where there are um, a couple uh, DC to DC converters. We're going to split the path uh, once, then twice. And so we have four devices in parallel uh, that creates the 30 watt output and then we have to uh, these are these are those nice uh, ffl 120 parts and then they all get combined uh, to the output